Hello and welcome along. My name is Eddie and this is my vlog and today is June the 12th. Uh, we are heading back to the uh, back to the dairy farm with the little Fiat here the uh, the one I think this is the 110 uh, and uh, and yeah we've got the sprayer on the back and the care wheels on because it's time to get rid of the weeds we've got a weed infestation all across the farm uh, we've got a lot of spraying to do uh, we're going to start with our biggest field with field six and uh, and get that done first uh, but basically yeah i need to get uh, every single field on this farm weeded because every single field on this farm has weeds uh, the exception we've got to that is the clover uh, we're going to be doing that fairly soon and getting that um sorted in so far as oh i need to before i unfold this sprayer there we go and there we are because this is a very very wide sprayer and making sure that we're not gonna do much damage now before i get in here and get rid of these things uh what we need to do is uh, i just want to have a look at how this is going this is this is going well. i think this is oats in this field and uh yeah it's looking pretty good at the moment we've got a nice amount now with this uh this uh Cabernet x track t4 uh you can actually get this with some ridiculously wide uh spraying arms on it we've not got the uh we've not got massively ridiculously wide ones uh we've actually got the smallest setup on this uh, but it is a uh, it is a cracking setup works well with this 11090 and uh, and should uh, should allow us to get the herbicides done on here fairly easily so let's get the spray turned on and get ourselves going position it right for the edge of the field we're going to do the headland first as usual uh, when we're doing spraying or fertilizing uh, and then we'll head round uh, and up and down the field of course the downside to this tractor is that uh, no gps on it so uh, i'm doing a fair amount of eyeballing and trying to keep my arms out of the hedge uh as a result but it's uh yeah there's a little bit of a, a blind spot when i turn certain ways with the uh with the spray so just trying to keep that under control and uh once we got the headland done this gets easier uh but the headland is always the tricky part trying to keep it out of uh the edge there or trying to yeah trying to make sure we get it up to the edge so we get maximum coverage for the herbicide but at the same time as you can see trying to keep it out of the hedgerow so that uh that i don't damage it brushing the hedge is fine it's uh it's sticking it actually in there and uh it, it, it's fine for the most part it's when you hit a tree and then you bend the arm and then you cost yourself a lot of money in getting it repaired so uh yeah i'd rather keep it out of the hedgerow and uh and uh yeah keep from getting any bends in we might need to lift this up i think because we're while i want to keep it low to the crop uh get the best uh best spray coverage some points of the field uh dip down a bit as we as we discovered before and discussed before on here uh we do get some uh parts of the fields that are a little bit more uneven than others i'm actually spraying a lot of the grass verge i want to try and avoid that we're in the field that's better that's much better uh but uh yeah so as we discussed before here it's um we want to try and keep things uh nice and uh in the field waste as little as possible uh, it's not the end of the world if we're spraying the grass at the edge but it would be much better if we just kept it on the crop uh, where we're getting rid of the weeds in the field and not the stuff on the edge. Uh, I don't really want to spray herbicide on the edge because there's a certain amount of, you know, we, we get uh, a good amount of 
wildlife in the uh, grass at the edges of fields and uh, we don't really want to be killing all of that off so uh, we try and be careful to keep what we're spraying and what we're doing inside the field uh, is always a wise way to go but uh, yeah I think we've got the hang of this now coming to the end of the headland um, we'll bring this down here and in and then we can start heading down the field like this and uh, and yeah start doing our rows and it's uh, we try and keep fairly straight on here and, uh, and make sure that we're pretty good you can see where the uh, where we cut in or brought where we brought it in earlier uh, so what I want to do is uh, just cut off the uh, spray as we go through here in fact actually we can't I'll just adjust it so that it's just that end there perfect and that will then give us coverage for that and uh, and yeah keeping nice and straight uh, trying to just turn as we need to and you can see it's killing off uh, we're killing off the weeds rather nicely uh, while trying to keep on the best uh, line that I can and uh, now that we're into the field should be able to talk a little bit more about uh, what we've got planned and what we've got coming up on the farm. Uh, as I was saying earlier, we, we've got every single field on this farm. Uh, we need to get some herbicide on. We have uh, quite a lot of um, quite a lot of weeds infesting the farm at the moment, but uh, this should get rid of them fairly swiftly and uh, and will be good for us uh we've also got uh the clover ready to cut so um i think my next vlog i'm probably going to cover doing that we need to uh we need to cut it uh and we need to i need, I need to go and try and see whether uh the freshly cut clover that is going to cause us any issues uh in so far as getting uh stuff done uh, or, or getting that um, uh, getting that loaded up in the forage wagon and tipped because we're going to make clover silage. We're not looking to uh, to do hay from it. We want to do silage from it. Uh, and I need to check if uh, if we need to get it tethered and dried a little bit first, or whether that's going to have too big an effect on the clover and uh, and prevent it actually being used for silage. There we go, and down here. There we are. And uh, and yes, so with uh, with any luck, that will all work out fine and uh, and be good. Ah, uh, and then it's uh, yeah, it's just then working our way through the rest of the summer. We'll have another cut of the uh, another cut of the grass. Uh, in the middle of the summer uh, what we will probably do with that because it's the best time of year for us to dry the grass and make hay um, I think we'll probably be making some hay bales from that some nice big Heston hay bales uh, that we can use to feed the cows uh, will be good and uh, and then yeah as we get towards the end of the summer we're gonna be doing we're gonna be getting in here we're gonna be cutting this this is going to be a lot of fun to cut this field it is absolutely massive and uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to trying out our harvester that we got with the farm on here uh, because it's a little bit of an unusual harvester it is uh, it is from that period of uh crossover between uh fiat and uh and new holland which is always uh an area that i love to um to love to play around with if you, you you've seen me before especially when um well, you know, we had uh, a 180.90 on Ballincraig. In fact, we still do have a 180.90 on Ballincraig, and uh, we were, uh, and we had that that really interesting Fiat uh, combine uh, over down in uh, Scatterbrook, uh, down on Scatterbrook Farm. Uh, so we've uh, we've got that 
Uh, we've, got, we've got this other one kicking around here. Uh, interesting enough, the, uh, the, the Fiat Combine. Uh, I know that we had uh, we we bought that new uh, John Deere combine for uh, for Scatterbrook before we left there. Uh, the Fiat combine we've got back. So having sold Scatterbrook, uh, we've actually got the Fiat combine back, which is amazing. Uh, really nice to ha to have that back and uh, and have that usable. I'm setting myself on this tree here. And, uh, yeah, we should be in a good position. We should be uh, able to, to maybe bring that back and, uh, and try it out on here. There's a, couple of, uh, there's a couple of fields which I think would just be great to try that combine out on. Uh, not least of which uh, just over that way there, the one that we, um, uh, the one that we had an interesting time doing some cutting on so uh yeah we still got that it's uh it's actually over in Ballancraig now uh it's uh it's one of the few things that we have left from scatterbrook and is uh yeah is uh is good uh so we've got the t have got the tx over on Ballancraig, and then we've got the uh, uh we've got the other one as well oh we want to be there that's my line Keeping my line on here is uh, is tricky, but uh, I'm I'm giving a, a rough idea, or I've got a rough idea of where I need to be. Don't want to do too much overlapping is the only thing. But you can see the areas of weeds that we've uh, we've cleared, and uh, and and that are beginning to die off already. And then we've got the areas that we're uh, we're working our way through. Should get. I think we're getting a good bit of coverage on here. But it is quite a big field. This. I think uh, most of my vlog is probably going to be uh, getting this field covered in herbicide. Made it a good way into the field now, and uh, yeah. I'm um having uh, having been working on this field I'm very very much thinking uh, I'm looking at an upgrade for this tractor. Um so I've been a bit spoiled recently by the T7. It's uh it's <sighs> such a modern tractor with things like GPS and things in like that. And I'm having great fun trying to find the line uh in this field uh, where we've uh, where <laughs> where it's been seeded. And uh, and as a result, it's 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 trickier. It's trickier doing it like this than than with uh, some of the mod cons like uh, GPS. And GPS is one of those things that has made a sprayman's job so much easier in recent years. Uh, the idea that you you know you 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 start getting, especially with these modern machines, you start getting. Uh, you know a lot of computerized knowledge of uh what uh, how much is being uh, delivered for you know and every second how uh, how good your coverage is uh, you even get automatic shutoffs for different valves and things which is uh, or you know different spray nozzles so that you're uh, especially when you come to the end of the field and you might have half a row uh, you're only putting down spray absolutely where you need it which is amazing you know it's 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 really modern stuff but the problem you have is that you need a modern tracks to do that kind of thing and uh and yeah this uh as lovely as this fiat is as great as uh, it is to drive this it is not a modern tractor it is uh what a good at this point it's a good 20 25 if not more years old in fact no it's been more than that uh it's it's got to be uh 30 odd years old now and that's uh you know farming has moved on a lot in those 30 years we are uh, you, you no longer have farms full of uh, full of workers and uh, you know a smaller farm end here i'm talking so i'm talking your your 500 to sort of two and a half thousand acre farms uh, which at one time would have had uh, would have had you know a whole team of uh, of workers on them these days 
uh, it's it tends to be a lot a lot like uh, we run here uh, a lot of uh, one-man bands and, uh, and and things like that so yeah it's uh, quite a different setup that's happened in 30 years and you end up sort of rather than having multiples of of one tracks you end up having uh, uh, a range that that fits what you need for one person to run the farm and uh, and lots of farms now the farms actually tractors have got to to the point where we we having four or five here is odd you know they will run with a much more all-purpose tractor across the farm it's uh because you not with, with multiple people no longer working the land you are in a position where you have uh you have a lot less need for uh all that multiple machinery you want you want maybe one or two tractors to uh to cover all the jobs that you're doing and uh and with the expense of a tractor these days you can see why but uh yeah to get back to my point i, I basically i think i would like to have a, a nice modern t6 or, or t5 a t5 actually we only need this is only a 110 so we only need about uh we only need about 110 horsepower uh, to replace this and and just modernize a bit i think maybe so uh, we'll have a look there is a uh, there is a nice limited edition t5 i know that uh, that would be nice to get my hands on and to keep the uh, to keep the pedigree of this farm uh, it's uh, it's fiat new holland roots and uh, and go with that and there we go that is this field done turn that off and fold this up and what we can actually do one of the nice things about this field is i think we've got a gateway up this end somewhere otherwise uh, i'll just uh, i'll just head back along the headlands but i thought we had a gateway up this corner i might be wrong no i am wrong we did uh, we don't have one up here we've actually got um I think I showed you guys this last time we did this field. Jump through the hedge here. This is not a public road. This is uh, this is a road that was part of the original estate here. It's better. Uh, it's better done than uh, than the obviously the the dirt road coming up to it. But yeah, this was all part of the estate at one point. And uh, and when I was talking, uh, I think I was talking when we were drilling this field. Uh, my my ultimate plan is to to re uh rebuild this estate to to what it once was and in doing that we uh we should be uh it, it would be brilliant to be able to do that i want to come and get the herbicide down on uh which is the best field for us to do we kind of want to do stuff in the order we've seeded it so uh i need to go and have a look at my uh, pda and see if we can see the growth stages of everything so let's uh we'll cut across the corner right here now uh, let's just get to here and i'll bring up the pda and we'll see what the state of everything is on the farm so you can see here on our pda we've got a status of how everything is growing you can see here field 40 that is our uh, that is our clover field so we're going to be uh, cutting that in the next few days because that is ready to harvest uh the other fields that we want to look at uh, i think and see if we can spray today i think we'll go and have a look at field five see if we can get that spray today and uh, and maybe field one as well i think uh given the amount of time left in today it's probably going to be field five is the only one we get done so let's put the PDA away and uh, and we'll head back out this way. And we get to this round to the back of here. Still not quite worked out where we're going to get the uh, silo built. We've got a few contractors who have come and given us quotes now. And, uh, and hopefully 
we will be able to decide from those we're not going to make it into that field from this direction that's fine one of the nice things about this yard is uh there are multiple ways to get to some places that make it easier for us to turn so we can go around the back here with this round the back here this is what makes me think it'd be a really good idea to have a uh, a grain store come round here either something that we can tip as we drive past or something in here we've got the potter jafaro here because we uh, are a little bit out of space and you can see at the end of the year we are just collecting up a very very nice big pile of manure from our cows uh, that is going to be very useful come the end of the year and here's our field of wheat and uh yeah look at that same infestation of weeds so let's close this gate up so that we can uh, easily unfold this might see i might have a word with uh with our local dealer see if we can uh, have a trial of something else later on let's get into here and get spraying this though and uh, and get rid of these weeds they really are infesting everywhere at the moment but it'll be uh it'll be good to get these fields done and dusted and uh and uh and yeah know that our crop is gonna be at the best it can be when we come to harvest it in a few months time one of the nice things about this sprayer is the size of its tank i mean this will do a very very nice amount of fields i'm expecting us to uh to be able to get this field done and uh the uh and field six done on just this tank um as i said it's a it's a pretty nice sizable tank uh that this uh that this sprayer has uh and as a result we are you know we're just able to to spray a lot of stuff at once it means i can i can be out most of the day spraying and uh, and get the entire field done uh, or a set of fields done uh, without worrying too much about having to return to the shed and refill uh we just we just yeah we're out here and we're able to get it uh, get it all done and uh, and getting it all done again it's, it's that efficiency thing it's uh, it's the whole modern uh, equipment setup means that we are able to uh to do pretty well and we've got this, the light here again easier to see our line from the uh one end of the field than it is the other uh which is uh exceptional i'm i'm amazed that that's the difference between going one way to the other now hopefully i am on the right line i was on the right line the previous way i think i was yeah that's that's got most of that that's good uh, i might have to shift over a little bit judging by that but uh we're good in general yeah we've got a nice patch here that will tell us how well we are on our line and by the looks of things not too bad it's not got all of that though i might have to uh turn a couple of nozzles off and head back down that way otherwise i'm pretty happy yep and our line is there that is good but uh yeah this is the this is a nice spray it was uh with after after the debacle we had recently with the uh oh well it's a few months ago now uh that we had with all of the uh grass equipment we did check the ownership of this sprayer because this sprayer is was yeah again another very new addition to the farm uh just before we bought it and uh and thankfully 
this was bought out right this was part of it so everything there worked out well the the legal stuff with the rest of it that is uh, that is just still working its way through uh, i don't think we're gonna see anything from it as i said the the previous farm here was in a bad way uh and uh the idea that they might have any money to uh to compensate us for for loss of equipment like that i think the bank basically took most of the money for this farm uh which explains why you know we got the core part of it uh and we had to we had to buy some of the fields separately uh we got the core part of the farm but there are lots of fields that uh that are still connected to the farm here that got sold off separately and uh and yeah so it's uh it's not great but um we if, if we can unify the the estate here again that would be uh that would be amazing and i'm trying to find out what the old estate was called i think it was called Ballarock estate uh and the the town was part of its uh founding but uh yeah trying to trying to get all the information together and uh, and discover stuff is uh it's good fun just sort of trying to yeah work out what is go uh what has gone on and the history of this place because uh yeah it is now a whole load of separate farms whereas once it was one and uh, and i'd like to know why and if and if we are ever able to merge it again if we do get up to that 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 may be the point where we actually have to hire some help uh, because there are a lot of fields here and i only have so many hours in the day last row of the field got a, a little bit of an overlap but uh, still got weeds so we need to get down here we've got a uh, i think we've got a gate yeah we have got a gate at this corner of the field so we don't need to go all the way back round to the top of the field uh, we can actually get out here onto the main road which is good uh because we want to take all of this back down the bottom uh and then we're going to give it all a wash down uh it is uh well you can see the state of this tractor uh so we want to uh we want to give everything washed down and get that done there we go turn those off and fold it in that is nice coverage of the weeds on this field we're likely to have a few more crop up before harvest but in general that should be good let's open this gate oh no 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 it's gonna hit the tractor i thought i'd got the track i thought i got the tractor in a good place then because uh, i thought the gate opened the other way let's spin this round there we go yeah, you don't want to hit the gate with the tractor. That's not a wise thing to do. Bend the gate, bend the tractor. Especially a classic like this 11019. I mean, that is a proper classic tractor, that one. Right, so let's uh, get this back down to our... I think we'll get our beacon on as we're going out onto the road. We'll have to pull out... And over to the other side. And yeah, you can see it comes out at the bottom of our uh, our gateway here. I think they tried to prepare uh, the farm for selling lots of uh, different... Um, uh, the, the fields off separately. Uh, because there are a few gateways like that onto, onto the road and, and things where... It doesn't make a lot of sense when there's a gateway up at the top end of the farm. I always, I always think the uh, the entrance to this yard is further up than it is. All right, and bring this around here. Get ourselves over here. That way we can give this a wash down. Right, so. Ah, there we go. Brighten her up. 
And it's good to it's good to do this after a day spraying because obviously uh, you got all the um, the herbicide re residue or fertilizer residue that you'll get on the tractor. So uh, we want to just wash it off, make sure that it's uh, any effects that it might have are uh, are minimised. Uh, same with this. Give our sprayer a wash down. We got some more. Uh, I got some more spraying to do. Uh, I'll be doing that over the next few days. Get rid of the rest of the weeds that we've got on the farm. We'll be good. And uh, then we might have a little bit of fertilizer spraying to do later. Let's go around here. Well, don't want to get our cord caught. Right. And then back her up. We'll get this uh, down here back into the shed still got the t6 sitting out here it's been it's been a dry few days I mean we wouldn't be spraying if it hadn't been a dry few days uh, and as a result the uh, I've not needed to move the t6 but I should, probably should get it done this is this is kind of a spray and uh, yeah, this is kind of a spray and fertilizer shed with what we've got on here. We've got the, the that coon lime spreader uh, here. Which I don't know if we've got any lime left in it. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah, we've got plenty of lime left in that. That'll be needed later in the year. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we've got our Cavernland uh, spreader. And, uh, and of course, we've got this... Uh, Cavernal and um, sprayer as well. So I'm just going to turn off the beacon because we don't need that on. But uh, yeah, I think that is going to be a good place for us to end this vlog today. So uh, all that remains is for me to say a thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Please give it a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from the farm please subscribe to the channel ring that bell and i will see you next time goodbye